Today's mission is fueled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, viewers like you, the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television, and Delta Airlines. Because learning about geography is a great way for kids to learn about each other, no matter where they hang their hats. Delta Airlines, on top of the world. having fun out there and when people have fun I feel like I'm not doing my job hmm. I know with just one theft I'll change the history of fun forever this is a perfect job for barren wasteland well 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 if it isn't my favorite evil genius thanks I'm sending you through the time port to Chicago, Illinois, in the year 1893. There's something very special I want you to steal. No problem. I majored in theft at Henchman U. Good. This info beam will give you all the details. Now, get going. Time pilot. Baron Wasteland just stole something from the past. You've got... 28 minutes to get it back, or history will change forever. Initiate Chrono Skimmer launch sequence. Boot up the Chrono computer. Power up the engines. Extend the temporal sequencer. Now, get going. We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. Chrono Skimmer, engines hot. Vile villains, evil plot, our brave squadron leader will help us get beater and bring back the loot to its rightful place in time. Tell me where in time it's gone in San Diego. Stop her crime and solve this mystery. Tell me where in time it's gone in San Diego. We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. And here's the time pilot squadron leader. Hey, welcome aboard, everybody. I want you to hang on tight because we've got a very big mission, but very little time. So let's meet today's time pilot, starting with Anthony Hans. Come on, Anthony. Welcome to the squadron, buddy. All right. And Lauren Cole. Lauren, nice to see you today. And Lee Tinquist. Lee, nice to have you on this mission, kiddo. All right, time pilots. Just so you know, we depend on fact fuel to power the Chrono Skimmer, and you guys will be generating that power with your answers. Now, each of you is equipped with 100 power points, so let's check in with the Chrono Skimmer engine crew. All right, they look ready and raring to go. So, let's begin our pursuit of Barren Wasteland. Chief, what's our mission profile? Squadron, your time target is 1893. Destination, Chicago. It's where a huge fair marked the 400th anniversary of Columbus's voyage. Millions came to visit. And rode the world's first Ferris wheel, saw a giant engine, and admired the nighttime lights, all powered by the strange marvel called electricity. Until the fair, few Americans had seen electricity put to practical use. But once they saw its wonders, America's fascination with high-tech progress was sparked. Or so history told us till now, when Baron Wasteland went back in time and filched the pair. Good to know, Chief. All right, pilots, for 10 power points, what did Baron Wasteland steal? The first Disney theme park, the Chicago Explorers Convention, or the World's Columbian Exposition? All right, guys, you heard the clues. Lock on to an answer as soon as you can there. Okay, good. Anthony, what'd you say, pal? I chose the world's Colum Columbian ex ex Exposition. All right. And Lauren? The Chicago Explorers Convention. And Lee? The Chicago Explorers Convention. All right, correct answer is the world's <laughs> Columbian Exposition. So 10 points for Anthony. You know, the world's Columbian Exposition set the stage for a 20th century American tradition. New technological wonders displayed in festive public presentations. So, now we know what Baron Wasteland stole, we want to get it back, don't we, guys? And
And I'll tell you, if one of you today can retrieve that loot and capture Carmen Sandiego, you'll win a complete multimedia computer system. Not bad, huh? I can tell by all those smiles you like to do that. So, let's get underway and do it. Engine room, let's warp to the time of the crime. <laughs> Okay, pilots, we've made it to the year 1893, and so far... Wait a second, we've got... All right, trouble. That last warp really drained our fact fuel. We need to refuel with a data boost. All right, I'll name a series of events. Your job, buzz in and tell me whether each event took place in the 1890s or the 1990s. If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five, okay? Remember, 1890s or 1990s. Here we go. First successful heart surgery performed. Going to Anthony. 1990s? Actually, it was 1893. It was performed by African-American surgeon Daniel Hale Williams. All right. Electron discovered. Going to Lee. The 1890s? Yes, 1897. Very good. Europe's first female prime minister resigns. Going to Lauren. 1990? Yes. That was Britain's Margaret Thatcher who resigned. World population nears 5.5 billion. Going to Anthony. 1990s? Yes, 1991. Annual U.S. auto production reaches 25 cars per year. Going to Lee. The 1890s? Correct, 1896. Very nice round, guys. We've replenished our fact fuel. And just a reminder, all our fact fuel is verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. Now let's continue our mission here in 1893. Got... Wait a second. Hey, guys, that's the clue finder. Locked on to someone. Let's see where they are in the future. Let's bring them on board, see if they can help us. Well, you look like you just came from a carnival or a fair. Uh, yeah. Well, I just came back from that big World's Fair thing they're having, you know. The World's Fair? Oh, that must have been amazing. Did you see some great stuff or what? Oh, uh, no. Nothing too special. No, uh, They were showing these new cathode ray tubes. Yeah. You know, that new television thing. And, and President Franklin Roosevelt was on it, talking. Oh, wow, one of the first televisions? Mm. Oh, that must have been so exciting. You know, someday, everyone's going to have one in their living rooms. <laughs> Silly. Who'd want their own television? What do you mean, everybody wants a television? Why? Well, because you can watch such great stuff, that's why. You can watch uh, the sporting events like uh, bowling or fishing. You can watch uh, comedy shows about kids who are robots. And don't forget about the shows about talking horses. And they can watch people reenacting accidents and calling ambulances. And, and hey, you can even watch a host and three kids chase an imaginary crook through time. Now, nah, I'll pass. But you got a real interesting place here. <laughs> I had really high hopes for the last show. Well, keep your fingers crossed, guys. All right, guys, you heard the clues from our visitor. Tell me the place and year where Barren Wasteland is now hiding, okay? Is it Chicago, 1899, New York, 1939, or Tokyo, 1950? Remember the clues we just heard? World's Fair is being held, television demonstrated, and Franklin Roosevelt is president. All right, guys, lock on to an answer as soon as you can. All right, Anthony, what did you say? I chose New York, 1939. All right, Lauren? New York, 1939. Lee? Tokyo, 1950. All right, correct answer is New York, 1939. <laughs> Ten points for Anthony and Lauren. Very good, guys. You know, Squadron, television got its big public kickoff in the U.S. at the 1939 World's Fair. But if the history of fairs and expositions is erased, well, then this show might never happen, I guess. All right, Engine Room, let's warp to 1939. <laughs> Going somewhere time takes? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, time pilots, we made it back to 1939, but Baron Wasteland has zapped our fact fuel. We need to refuel with a data boost. All right, time pilots, I'll name something you might use in your leisure time. You buzz in and tell me whether in 1939 it cost under $5, 
cost over $55 or didn't exist yet, okay? If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five. Here we go. We're in 1939, and all prices come from the 1939 Sears and Roebuck catalog. Pocket knife. Going to Anthony. Under $5? Yes, under $5, 95 cents to be exact. Table tennis set. Again to Anthony. Under $5? Yes, $2.95. Typewriter. Going to Lauren. Um, over 50? Yes, $54.50. See, these things are things you usually leave your time, apparently. Pocket transistor radio. Again to Lauren. Didn't exist? It did not exist. It was introduced in 1952. Finally, a flashlight. Going to Lee. Didn't exist? Actually, it was under $5. A flashlight called Fit cost 55 cents. Great job, pilots. You've replenished our fact fuel. And that means we're ready for time travel in 1939, guys, which should make us happy because that's our mission. So, um, wait a second, pilots. We're picking up something on a frequency. It's breaking into the... Lost again, my little time pests? Too bad, because I'm having a grand time in 1955 at the opening of Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Until now, an amusement park was a bunch of rides and games thrown together willy-nilly. But Disneyland is the first theme park, because each area has its own theme. There's Frontierland and Tomorrowland, but what they really need is Wasteland! Wasteland! <laughs> theme schmeem! Over the next 40 years, 350 million people will visit Disneyland. The thought of that many people enjoying themselves makes me want to soak my head. Nah. I tell you, always vying for attention, that guy. All right, pilots, we know the year Baron Wasteland is in. Tell me who was president at the time, okay? Dwight D. Eisenhower, Lyndon B. Johnson, or Richard M. Nixon? Remember the clues we just heard? Disneyland opened in Anaheim, California. First theme park, and the year 1955. All right, Anthony, what did you say? I chose Dwight D. Eisenhower. All right, Lauren? Lyndon B. Johnson. And Lee? Dwight D. Eisenhower. All right, correct answer is Dwight D. Eisenhower. Ten points for Anthony and Lee. Pilots, the big fairs of yesteryear evolved into the modern-day theme parks. But if that history is erased, then Disneyland might never happen, and who knows how that will change the history of childhood. In either case, let's warp to 1955. <laughs> All right, we followed Baron Wasteland to the year 1955, but he knows we're on to him because he's about to do some globe hopping. So it's time for global pursuit. Grab your controls, watch the globe on your screen, and buzz in when you think you know the answer. If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five, okay? Remember, we're in 1955. Here we go. Baron flipped to the city where the first Guinness Book of World Records was just written. Going to Anthony. London? Yes, London. Now he's skipped to a country whose Latin cha-cha dance recently spread to U.S. ballrooms. Going to Lauren. Cuba? Correct. He's chilling in a province that's holding its first annual winter carnival. This time going to Lee. Quebec? Yes, Quebec. He hopped to the city where TV's The Honeymooners show is produced. Going again to Lee. New York? Yes. Finally, he's in a country which won't get its first TV set for another four years. Finally, Lee. India? Yes, very nice job, guys. Yeah. Lots of good news. The bad news, I just found out, Baron Wasteland just skipped out of India right before we got there. And furthermore, you know what? We're out of clues, guys. I mean, that's no good. I, you know, you, you try and prep for this, and I'll have a solution, but it's not pretty. So just, just bear with me. We don't like to do it, but time is running out. The situation is desperate, all right? Chief, we have to contact Omnisha. It's awful risky, Captain. The, the power surge needed may cripple the chrono skimmer. I know, I know, but we have to do it. All right. I'll input the enabling codes. It's 1993. And Back to the Future, the ride just opened. It takes you through a volcano and close to a snarling T-Rex 
all by using motion simulation technology pioneered by special effects genius Douglas Trumbull. Trumbull was asked to work on the Back to the Future ride by Steven Spielberg, who will win his first Oscar for this year's Best Picture. Many people think motion simulation rides will be the wave of the future in entertainment. All right. You know, you think that ticking would give her a headache, but apparently not, because she keeps giving us those clues. So, time pilots, we know the year where Barren Wasteland is hiding. Name the Steven Spielberg film that was released. Was it Schindler's List, Gone with the Wind, or E.T.? Remember the clues we just heard? 1993, Back to the Future, The Ride opens, and first Spielberg movie to win Oscar for Best Picture. Everybody racking their brains, I see it. Okay, Anthony Powell, what'd you say? I said Schindler, I chose Schindler's List. Okay, and Lauren? Schindler's List. And Lee? Schindler's List. Oh, you know what? The answer is Schindler's <laughs> List. Very nice, guys. 10 points for everybody and smiles all the way around. You know, Squadron, entertainment technologies like motion simulation let us take virtual reality adventures that we could not never experience in real life. But life's gonna be a lot less entertaining if we don't save history soon. So, Squadron, We've got to make one final leap forward in time, and that means an ultimate data boost. <laughs> Pilots, in an ultimate data boost, each correct answer is worth 10 power points. But if you're wrong, you lose 10, all right? I'll read you a fact about movies. Your job is to buzz in and tell me if the fact is true or false, all right? Here we go. Thomas Edison built the first American movie studio. Going to Anthony. False. Actually, that's true. The studio was completed in 1893. Charlie Chaplin was a mute. Going again to Anthony. True. Actually, that's false. He made many silent classics, but he wasn't a mute. Grover Cleveland was the first president to be filmed. Going to Lee. True. Yes. I'm thinking true. Yes, yes. Yeah, and you got it. Chocolate sauce was used as fake blood in the movie Psycho. Going again to Lee. True. Yes. It was used in the famous shower scene. It is illegal to show American movies in Russia. Going to Lauren. False. Correct, it is false. Former President Ronald Reagan once starred with a chimp in a movie called Bedtime for Bonzo. Going to Anthony. False. Actually, that was true. That was in 1951. Reagan did not appear in the sequel called Bonzo Goes to College. Check that out. Francis Charles de Gaulle got his start in silent films. Yes, Lauren. True. Actually, it's false. In-flight movies began in the 1920s. Going into Lauren. False. Actually, that's true. The first in-flight film was shown in 1925. Okay? Finally, the celluloid used to make movie film is made from animal cells. Yes, think. Yes, Anthony? True. Actually, it's false. But you took a chance. It's a tough kind of plastic is what it really is. All right, guys. Nice round, though. Let's see how well we did. Anthony has 115 power points, Lauren has 130, and Lee has 160, which means Lee and Lauren, you're moving on to the next phase of our mission. Anthony, you did a great job, though, pal. You should be proud of yourself. You made a great time, pal. You know that? And right now, the Chief wants to say a few words to express our appreciation. Criminal schmemino. Don't let Baron Wasteland get you down. You did outstanding work today. So, we'd like to reward you with our Acme Time Net Mission Pack. It includes a Deluxe Britannica World Atlas, this official Carmen T-shirt, the Chrono Skimmer cap with you-know-who's picture in front, a wear in time watch, plus the Carmen San Diego CD-ROM library and board games. You'll match wits against the crime queen herself through countless cases and thousands of clues. From Acme Time Net Command, we salute you! Okay, Squadron, we send Anthony back to Time Net Command while we stay on board here and complete this mission. You guys ready? Yes. yes. All righty, Chief, we're ready. Time Pilots, the history of entertainment and technology is at stake. Get to 1993. Your mission, acquisition of the exposition. Kevin, you're in command. You got it, Chief. All right, Time Pilots, full speed ahead to 1993. <laughs> Look, Baron Wasteland's got the exposition in a cybersphere. Activate the loot tractor beam. We'll meet again, Time Tots, and sooner than you think. 
Guys, we've gotten back the world's Columbian Exposition and have it safely on board. Congratulations, you've completed mission objective number one. But before we continue chasing Barren Wasteland, we've got to return the loot to the year 1893. So let's check in with the Chief to get our flight plan. Chief! Time pilots, you must navigate the Chrono Skimmer through eight events from the history of entertainment and technology, starting at the most recent event and finishing at the least recent event. The time pilot who does that goes on to chase Carmen and Baron Wasteland along the trail of time. Here are the events on your flight plan. Neon light is introduced. Disneyland opens in California. The world's Columbian Exposition opens. The blockbuster film Jurassic Park premieres. Kodak introduces the first commercial color film. Bugs Bunny first appears in a cartoon. The first live TV broadcast from the moon. The Walkman cassette player is introduced by Sony. That's your briefing time, pilots. Good luck on your journey. OK, Lee, you have the higher score. You have the choice of going first or second. I'll go second. All right, in that case, Lauren, I want you to navigate this chronoskimmer back through time from the most recent event to the least recent event, starting by picking the most recent event on the board. You may begin. Um, Jurassic Park appears? Correct, you've navigated us to 1993. The movie won an Oscar for visual effects. Keep going. Um, Walkman introduced by Sony? Yes, you've gotten us to 1979. The original portable stereo cost $200. Can you pick the next most recent event? Um, Neon Light introduced? Okay, we're gonna go to Lee. Jurassic Park premieres? Correct, 1993. Walkman introduced by Sony? Yes, 1979. First live TV from the moon? Correct, 1969. Disneyland opens in California? Yes, you've steered us in 1955. Florida's Disney World opened in 1971. Keep going. The first commercial color film? All right, back to Lauren. Jurassic Park premieres? Yes, 1993. Walkman introduced by Sony? Yes, 1979. First live TV from the moon? Correct, 1969. Disneyland opens in California? Yes, 1955. Keep going. Neon light introduced? All right, back to you, Lee. Jurassic Park premieres. Yes, 1993. Walkman is introduced by Sony. Yes, 1979. First live TV from the moon. Correct, 1969. Disneyland opens in California. Correct, 1955. Bugs Bunny first appears. Yes, you've gotten us to 1940. Keep going. First commercial color film. Correct, 1935. World's Columbian Exposition. Okay, back to Lauren. Jurassic Park premieres. Yes, 1993. Walkman introduced by Sony. Correct, 1979. First sight, TV from the moon? Yes, 1969. Disneyland opens in California? Correct, 1955. Bugs Bunny first appears? Yes, 1940. First commercial color film? Yes, 1935. Keep going. Neon light introduced? Yes, 1910. World Columbian Expedition. Yes, Lauren, you've saved history. Congratulations. You did a very good job. And so did you. You did a great job of getting us there, Lee. And right now, wow, that was tough, guys. Take a big breath, huh? Whew. Okay, that's good. But we're not done yet, because Lauren, you and I are going to move on in a moment. And Lee, you've got another mission from the Chief, and here she is to tell you about it. You've done some top-notch navigation today, and you always need to be ready for future missions. So, we're equipping you with a complete time net mission pack and this terrific portable CD player featuring a polycarbonate body, a MASH 1-bit DA conversion system, a 24-track random access programming. Plus, it's mighty smooth and pretty. Job well done, time pilot. All right, Lauren, you navigated us back to 1893 and returned the world's Columbian Exposition. Right now, Lee is piloting the Chronos Gamer back to the present, but Lauren, Baron Wasteland and Carmen are still out there. You seem pretty happy about that. We gotta go get them down, okay? So it's time for us to exit the Chronos Skimmer and head for the Trail of Time. Chief, is that a go? Kevin, I'm initiating the transportal exit sequence. Prepare to leave the Chronos Skimmer. We're all set, Chief. Look out, Carmen, we're on our way. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego. Stop her crime and solve this mystery. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego. Chasing us through history. Hey, Lauren, we've made it to the trail of time. We gotta track Carmen through six time portals by answering her questions. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Ready, set, go, Lauren, go. <laughs> 
follow the engine crew to the first portal. Go, go! It's 1859. Who invents the flying trapeze? The Ringling Brothers or Jules Leotard? Jules Leotard. All right, go on to the second portal following the engine crew. Way to go! It's 1891. What is Thomas Edison's early movie projector? Panavision or kinetoscope? Panavision. All right, pull the rope to open the gate. Pull, keep pulling, Lauren. Go, go, harder. Keep going, you're almost there. Keep pulling, keep pulling. It's almost to the top. All right, go. You've got four more to go. You've got 50 seconds left. It's the year 1908. Who are dancing on a New York stage? The Ziegfeld Girls or the Rockettes? The Rockettes? All right, crank that crank. To open the gate, just keep cranking, keep cranking. All right, go ahead. And you've captured Barry Wasteland. Way to go, Lauren. Keep up the good work. It's 1952. What do films shown in natural vision feature? 3D effects or Technicolor? Technicolor. All right, crank that again. Keep cranking, just like that. There you go. Keep going. It's almost to the top. That gate will open any moment now. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Two more to go. It's 1955. What Latin dance is spreading to the U.S.? The Lombada or the Cha-Cha? Lombada. All right, come on to the next one. run out of time and Carmen has escaped, Lauren, but you did capture Baron Wasteland. That's tough to do and you did it. We should be proud. And right now, the Chief's got something she wants to tell you. Chief! Time travel is not for the faint of heart. And you showed great courage and skill chasing Carmen today. To reward your fine work, you'll receive a full 32-volume set of Encyclopedia Britannica. It's the perfect tool to brief yourself on any future mission. Plus, the CD radio dual cassette system will let you listen to great tunes while you do it. Congratulations. You're now a head navigator. Thanks, Chief. Lauren, you have...